Welcome along to UK Panda 4x4. This time we're in the Peak District. I can't believe it's gone wrong. It'll break down before we've even started. <laughs> we haven't even started. Oh, it looks perfect from here. Uh, yeah, we changed the distributor more. cap as well. <laughs> Bearing in the old style, I guess. Steve Fixer, what do you do, Steve? I'll give it a good kick and it was alright. <laughs> <laughs> Once you put the belt back on. So I've got GTM. Would you like a 13 for that, sir? No, 16, it's on the end of the After Richard and Woody's engine had started making a loud knocking sound on the way to the event, we thought we were in for a pre-meet engine swap. However, thankfully, it was just the alternator bearings. So we just start it again now without, without it being tight. We'll take that wrench off. Oh, it should be okay. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, go on. Start it up. All clear. Yeah, all clear. I'm going to put load on, but yeah, the bearings are gone. It's loose, I get it loose. I'm going to put some pressure on. You can feel it in it as well. Can I get another one? Just that small amount. Yeah, not, no, not clean. It feels fine when you're spinning. Put it on the load. Thankfully though, a replacement part wasn't far away. Steve, the co-organiser of the event, only lives around the corner and he nipped home to get one from his spares pile. After a while of fixing cars, sitting round and talking rubbish, we headed out to the local pub for a slap up meal and a few drinks and got ourselves ready for the Saturday morning when the proper event was beginning. So it's the morning after the night before and we are in the, uh, in the car park with Si and Chris here. Now then. Greetings. <laughs> And uh, we had a bit of bother last night with uh, Rich and Woody's car. We thought we might have to take the engine out, but in, uh, in the end it turned out to be the alternator, which is fantastic. So now we've just got to fix my car after we nearly ended up uh, in doing some involuntary off-roading into a field last night when the throttle stuck open. So we're going to have a look at that. We haven't even started the event yet, and we've had plenty of breakdowns. Red or white, Freddy? Oh, you've got black? Yeah, yeah. that's... Red, but red or white. The same colour as the dipstick thing. They're, they're red, yeah. yeah. I thought that was good. Yeah. And more sporty, and your car's red. Yeah. Five horsepower. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I don't know if the yeah. tape's going to work. Right? It's a speed stripe. Tape there. will be fine. What are you on about? Just for what? Do you want some cable ties instead? Yeah. We could do both. <laughs> Saturday's route consisted of a 60 mile drive and included several miles of green lanes throughout the Peak District and the Derbyshire Dales. The pack had been split into three groups. The first group, led by Steve, were all set and ready to go for 10 o'clock. Not far behind was the second group, led by Freddie, 
who were attempting some of the less scratchy lanes for the day. The third group, led by me, had to wait a little longer before departure due to the initial absence of my co-driver. Right guys, we're heading out on the first day. This is a uh, green, green laning day in the Peak District. Um, we've just got Adam back, he's been on the juice last night. <laughs> so we had a late set off, we're the third group. The, uh, the first two groups have set off about, uh, they've been on the lanes about an hour already. So we're just making our way to the first lane now.
Mid-afternoon and we had reached the final lane for the day. Famous last words from our guide Adam, this may get a bit technical. I was first up to find us a path through the ruts. After managing to get through without falling in, it was Gavin's turn in the Mark III. After getting well and truly beached, we had to graft in several manpower to try and get him back out. With that method proving fruitless, I decided to wade back in with the Mark II to rescue the stricken Mark III. With Gavin's car back on the high bit, it was then the turn of Richard and Richard in the second Mark III. <laughs> With everybody jumping in to lend a hand and some excellent sideways driving from Richard, we freed the second Mark III from the mud. Spoiler was at fault. <laughs> well, it was yeah, well, too much. We just couldn't lift the back. Could we? No, <laughs> if we'd have had DRS, the Formula One version, we could have opened it. <laughs> <laughs> After plenty of fun and games with the Mark III's, it was up to the remaining Mark II's of Owen and Lewis to complete the first section. After this, it was onward through the ruts in the second section. Oh dear. 
stuck again. With Richard's Mark III now wedged on its own exhaust, it was time to get Muddy to get him out of trouble. It's not good. After the job was sorted with a few trusty cable ties, the time had come to get him unstuck. The recovery was textbook until Lewis's car, which was towing, then decided to fall into a rut as well. With the vehicle in front still stuck and no other cars behind, it was up to us to lift him back onto high ground. With some fantastic teamwork all round and all the cars moving again, we headed for the end of the lane. And that ended our day out in the Peak District. Join us next time on UK Panda 4x4 for some midnight mechanics and an extreme pay and play day at Tickhill Quarry. What do you reckon, Ad? Pretty gnarly. Gnarly as. Gnarly as. Ain't no fun in Land Rover, would it? No, it's cheating anyway. <laughs>